Hello. So I got a lot to get done today. Um, Tuesday's video, we took everything down for Christmas. And when I do that, I normally just take everything down, like basic cleaning, but that's it. Um, but now I need want to actually go through and deep clean and get the house back to its original state, especially since Bobby and the kids are complaining that the house feels empty. Um, but I don't like putting everything up right away. One, by the time I'm done taking everything down, I'm just exhausted. Two, it's a lot easier to go through and dust and vacuum and deep clean everything when nothing's out. So that's what I've been doing today. But I also just had groceries delivered. So I gotta go grab that. I have to get a hair tie. Um, and then, yeah, I think I'm gonna start in the family room and start getting that put together. Um, Dive in here, I'll just quickly show you. So I personally like the open, clean feeling when nothing's out, but there's no greenery. The kitchen seems very, very white. The built-ins are very, very empty. I haven't even put that picture up yet. Um, so yes, very empty. Then again in here, nothing, but, so this is what I'm talking about, like, I took everything down. We still have all this stuff everywhere. So all of this needs to get cleaned to get the dust and grime off of it. And the boys are helping me. I didn't even ask them to bring in groceries and they're bringing in the groceries for me. Thank you. <laughs> you got, oh, you got the one with bleach. That's heavy. <laughs> Thank yes. you. And Harvey. So this was not a crazy large grocery order. I just had a couple things that I needed um, for the recipe that I was making this night and the next night. So I just had a couple little added on things. I will say though, I was so disappointed. So I bought potatoes uh, and I end up using it in one of these recipes for dinner. And it wasn't like two days later that one of those potatoes started going bad on our counter um and attracted fruit flies i am so sad we are usually really good at keeping the flies out of the house um so i don't know what it was about that one potato but man you guys know how it is once you get one fruit fly in your house it is a total pain to get rid of them so that's no fun, but I did want to take a quick second and thank the sponsor of today's video. I am so excited to be working with Foreo today and talking about their Luna 4. You guys know me and I am not a super girly girl. So when it comes to like makeup and hair and things like that, I don't really talk about that type of stuff a lot. But when it comes to self-care products like this two-in-one smart facial cleansing and Fermi device, I love them. This cleanser was so silky and thick and luxurious. And then this is the Luna 4. It's a two-sided cleanser. And like I said, firming device. It comes with this app that literally walks you through the cleansing process as well as the massaging process. So I always get my face wet and then set it on right in front of me. You can see there to the left that it goes through 15 seconds in each main area of your face and it's super relaxing the pulsation and I absolutely love that it is made out of a ultra hygienic silicone. Also on one charge it can last up to like 600 uses so that is pretty awesome. Also the app guided firming massage is awesome. Directed low frequency pulsation to help firm wrinkled prone skin also help reduce visible signs of aging. 
I'm in my 30s now, so that is something that really matters to me. But also on top of that, it really just helps relax facial muscle tension points and improve the lymphatic drainage. Now I'm super excited because this device is rarely on discount and Foreo has offered the first 100 of you guys 21% off. You can check out my link in the description below. This is a great time to take advantage of this deal, but remember it is only for the first 100 of you guys. But once again, a big thanks to Foreo for sponsoring today's video. You got me tiptoeing around you like you made a glass. Got an invincible fence letting everyone know not to trespass. But you're bound to break down, bound to lose. Bound to get knocked right out of your boots when I use my witchcraft. You guys have to let me know down in the comments below if you are like me. I feel like here on social media, I feel like the odd one where I am not the type to get up and do my hair and do my makeup. Now, I used to be like that when I was younger. In my 20s, yes, hair, makeup, I wore heels every day, all the things. But as I've gotten older, I've just those things don't matter as much to me, but self-care still does. So I love using the Ferreo. I love using my scalp massager, things like that. A really good body butter or body scrub. Those are things I still absolutely love. Um, it's just the other things that I just don't worry about as much nowadays, especially when I'm just at home cleaning my house. And I always feel like the oddball. Like I see some of these other influencers um, on here that are all dolled up and looking good to clean their floors. And I'm like, I just can't see doing that. Um, so am I the only one or is it just me comparing myself to social media? And once again, just realizing that social media is not the average person. Oh, and when it comes to cleaning all of these shelves, so I am using the Method Wood for Good. I love using the Method Wood for Good. And since I was going over a lot of wood items today, I just took this out. Uh, often on like just a daily basis, I'll go through with my multi-purpose spray. That way I'm only carrying one cleaning item around to get everything done. Um, but like I said, since I was doing this entire piece, I wanted to grab this out and it always smells so good. It's like a special treat when I decide to use this one because it smells so good. I do recommend though, especially if you have pets like I do, to make sure you use some sort of duster if it's a dry microfiber cloth or um, the Swiffer like I did before wet dusting. It does make a massive, massive difference. So one thing I have learned with these electric fireplaces is dust and stuff still can get in there. So I've gotten to where about twice a year, it's pretty easy to take this glass piece off. There's just one little screw and then a um, cord that has to be unclamped, but it's really easy. But taking it off and cleaning it completely makes a huge difference. If you have one of these electric fireplaces, I highly, highly recommend it. Like I said, it is not that hard, but you don't even realize how like dirty that screen is until you clean it and you can see how good the fire and everything looks again. So I did this the first time it was last winter. And when I noticed the difference, now I try to do it a little bit more regularly. Like I said, not super regular, about twice a year, um, but it makes the biggest difference in the world.
Now it was time to decorate these shelves again. However, when I took out this um, little shadow box holds a lot of Bobby's military memorabilia. And I don't know what happened, but the little staples on it ended up coming loose. So I tried to push them back in and I started putting it back together and it popped right away. So I ended up just picking it all up putting it on the dining room um, and letting Bobby know that he had to put new little pin nails in there because, yeah, it was not staying. And it actually worked out well because I was just kind of going to put the metals in there in any sort of way. And I guess he actually had a uh, timeline set up of where each metal went based off of when he got them. So it worked out really well. And then I ended up having Xander help me. Uh, the kids did start school again this week, actually, Wednesday. So this is only their third day back at school. But on this day, they were still home. So I was taking advantage of it because if you got them around, you might as well take a little bit more advantage. And it saves a lot of time from otherwise getting up and down, up and down, pulling everything out of these different cabinets. The kids absolutely, though, love the clothes they have gotten for Christmas. That shirt Xander has worn about four or five times just since Christmas. So I keep having to clean all of them. And Freya and her Christmas princess, not Christmas, princess dresses. Oh, my goodness. Every day it's a new princess dress. And then she puts her crown on, her heels on, all of her jewelry as well as her, uh, she got a couple fake makeup kits. She does her makeup every single morning. I don't know where she gets it. Like I said earlier, I am not like a super crazy girly girl anymore. I do enjoy doing my makeup every once in a while if we're like going out um, or to a family event or something like that. But it's definitely not a daily occurrence of something she sees. So I think it is absolutely hilarious how into all of these different girly girly items she is but it is absolutely adorable at the same time So when I decorate, I obviously do have an aesthetic of things that I like, but I also like to work with things that have personal meaning to us. So pretty much everything on this shelf is something military related in some way, shape, or form. Uh, these little statues that I have put up are actually statues my dad got while he was uh, in the Navy and overseas. The flag Bobby got well overseas and this helmet, it was Bobby's grandfather's. And throughout this entire display is all different military memorabilia. I like to have it be aesthetic. So that's where I get my greenery and things like that. But I think pieces and decor are more timeless when there's like meaning and feeling to them. So I really like to decorate in that way. These pictures of the kids, we got all these pictures at the beach this year. And I just bought these giant frames on Amazon. That way I could replace them every year, every other year, whenever we get updated photos. And I love having them right here in the front entry. Um, and by having these photos done in more of a natural setting, like at the beach, I feel like they fit in so much better. I absolutely love the look of these photos and I'm going to have a hard time replacing them in the future because I do think they are so cute. I do think it's really important though when you're doing any type of cleaning task. I know, especially like this video, 
I, this video is longer than I normally do, but I think I warned you guys in Tuesday's video that this video was jam packed full of homemaking, mom life motivation here. Um, but it's really easy to forget that these videos are edited and filmed. Um, so when I'm cleaning, I personally like to start in one room and work on that main room before moving on. That way I can see my progress as I go. Or if I started a little bit in every single room, it's really easy to get discouraged because you could be working for an hour, but if you've been jumping from your kitchen, dining room, bedroom, family room, it kind of looks like nothing's been done. So that is why I personally try and stay in one area. So I started in this living room area and in the front entry before moving on to the rest of the house. If you are ever noticing you're like discouraged from cleaning or can't get motivated, that is one thing I highly recommend is try and focus on one area at a time. If that's telling yourself I'm not leaving this room till this room is done or as simple as setting a 10, 15 minute timer and telling yourself you can't you can go into another room after 10 to 15 minutes of this room first. In 10 to 15 minutes, you can pretty much tackle any room in your house. And visually seeing that progress will make life so much easier. Also, if you're a mom like I am, like you don't have hours and hours in one sitting to get stuff done. Like I have 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, 10 minutes there, five minutes there to get stuff done. So I like to be able to focus on one area at a time. And then if I have to go let the dogs out or take care of one of the kids, run an errand, whatever needs to be done, I know at least that one room has been completed top to bottom before moving on to the next area. Once again, when it comes to decor on these shelves as well, you might be like, what is this? Um, but a lot of it is memorabilia type stuff again. So those booze bottles up top, Bobby got those from his grandfather. I don't even know how old they are. I'm pretty sure they're collectible. I have no idea. He loves them, so we decorate with them. Um, the statue, once again, is one of the statues my dad got while he was overseas. And that little gator head was a souvenir we got our very first trip to Florida when Xander was just a baby. It wasn't our like first trip ever, but it was that first trip when Xander was a baby. Uh, this wine rules sign Bobby got for me for one Mother's Day. So I like having that up. Plus, it makes sense since this is our little bar area. Um, so yeah, we do still really like to play with stuff that has meaning. Also, how many of you guys still have all those Ray Dunn mugs? I went down that road of Ray Dunn also, and I still like a lot of their stuff, but I've gotten over so many words, it seemed to get busy for me. So I still have all the mugs, and my baby pink love bug one is still my favorite. That was actually a gift from Jessie, from Jessie at Home. Her and I are really good friends. And she found the love bug one and thought of me because I always call my kids love bug. And she always heard me say it over Marco Polo when I was talking to Xander or Bjorn. This was before Freya was born. And she sent me that. So that is still the mug I always grab for, even though it's baby pink. So I keep it in the center behind all the mugs because baby pink is nowhere in the dining area. It's my absolute favorite mug to grab for. Um, so yeah, I do still have my Ray Dunn mugs, but I do turn them around so you don't see all the words.
One thing I will say, if you get an espresso machine, you need a miniature vacuum like this because coffee grounds are inevitably going to end up somewhere because when you are filling the little hopper for your espresso machine, it never all stays in and it is always making a mess. So that is definitely a must. However, I have used that little vacuum in many, many areas of my house. So it does come in handy for more than just my morning coffee. Now into the kitchen. The kitchen honestly was not too bad. Um, I just needed to put some minor things away, put that ladder away. I knew I was pretty much done with that ladder. I mainly just needed it for the different built-ins and shelves. But I wanted to go in here and wipe everything down and then just add the little pieces that have been missing. Little pieces like greenery to me are so important. Like I don't add a ton to the kitchen area. Um, but getting my plants back in here and stuff like that, I try and decorate with things that are practical. So a lot of wood pieces and bowls and things like that. You can see I've got my cutting boards over here. And then this just little green plant adds a little bit more just color. Um, but then I have my bowl, my candles, things that I actually use on a regular basis. Um, when I have eggs, you guys have probably seen them before, I have two different egg containers that are wood as well that I keep on the counters that I think are really, really pretty, but they're also very practical because if I'm getting duck eggs or my mom sometimes will get fresh chicken eggs from her neighbor um, or quail eggs, having them out on the counter is the most practical way of going about it. This So I'm going to share one or two recipes in this video. I haven't decided. At least one because that's what I'm doing tonight. Um, but I have more stuff to get done in this house tomorrow. So I might share tomorrow night's dinner also. Especially since that's the one I got from one of you guys. But tonight we are going to do creamy garlic um, pork. And some rice and probably broccoli. Since that's what the kids usually eat the most of. Um, but we'll see. Hi Minnie. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna cut up some pork i actually we have found that the boneless butt roast is bobby's favorite pork so i just buy these and then cut them into pork chops and any of the extra i cut into bite-sized pieces to make for another meal All right, and now to season it, I'm going to use some seasoning salt, some paprika, which I am almost out of, as well as some garlic. We're gonna heat up some olive oil 
I'm not looking to cook the meat all the way through. I'm just looking to give it a really good brown. So I want a hot pan. Add some butter to the olive oil. That was probably a tablespoon, maybe just over a tablespoon. And I've had this cast iron heating up already, so it's already pretty warm. So now I just need to melt everything and do a really good brown on the pork chops. have chemistry but always chasing after someone else so this took me by surprise oh yeah even in my wildest dreams i didn't think we were destined to be and now you're laying next to me everything feels like oh yeah when you think you were the part of me i can't believe it makes you feel it's true Once both sides have a good cup to them, I'm gonna transfer them into a nine by 13. And then I'm gonna drop the other two in so they can get a good sear real quick. All right, and then once both, or, well, all four of them are all done or how many you are making, I'm gonna turn that heat down Let that pan cool down a bit before I move on to making the sauce that'll go on top of these. Now onto the sauce, I am going to add a little bit more butter. Let that melt. I really let this pan cool down a good bit because I don't want this to burn and I had it at such a high heat to get a good crust on there. But as you can see, it's still hot because it's melting pretty quickly. And then some garlic, fresh is best, but we go through so much garlic in this house that I keep a giant tub of minced garlic. Um, and garlic with how much you like. We like a lot of garlic, so a lot of garlic. feet raindrops falling on the street i can't recall when i last saw the sun Some... i'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of flour to thicken this up i don't directly measure i'm just kind of eyeballing it that's probably about two tablespoons and i'm gonna mix that all together and let it cook down to get rid of that flour taste to it. Um, luckily, that's pretty easy when you have all that garlic in there. It's going to cook down pretty well. But just keep mixing it so it doesn't burn or anything. On the beach, fun. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. These lazy days are never done. And then once that's all cooked in, we're going to slowly add some milk. Shy away from a good time. Coming on Friday night. I see my friends and feel all right. There ain't no stopping us from having fun. There ain't no cloud inside. The future is looking bright. some of this tomato bruschetta that I got from Walmart. Uh, I tried this a couple weeks ago and it's delicious. So instead of tomato paste, I'm gonna do this to have just a little bit of different spices in there. We're also going to season the pot. Uh, pepper. 
gonna do some garlic powder and then some more of the seasoning salt and to give it a little bit more of a kick we're gonna add some stone ground mustard And then I decided that I'm gonna add in some spinach as well. Oh, I almost forgot some Parmesan. So let's actually do our Parmesan first. Do about a half a cup. Half a cup to a cup. Once again, just eyeball it. And I'll say this again the reason I like cooking over baking is you can substitute stuff if you don't like it if you want less garlic put less garlic in it if you don't like spinach don't add spinach um, if I had an onion on hand I probably would have added an onion to this but you really can play with recipes with things you want things you have on hand um, if you don't have anything or you have extra stuff you want to use up, you can really just play with this. So maybe you didn't want to add spinach, but you really like mushrooms and you wanted to add mushrooms, whatever you want. So I'm just going to completely smother these pork chops in this. This will keep them super juicy. This cut of pork is already usually very, very tender, which is why we like it so much. Um, but then adding this to it adds a lot of flavor and keeps it really, really moist. I'm just going to put that in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. Shouldn't take too long since the pork is partially cooked I already. I cooked up some rice and I did season the rice with some butter and seasoning salt. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. I'm gonna grab some of the sauce that's at the bottom of this. And then I'm just gonna take the pork and put it right over the top. You do not want to miss all the sauce because that is delicious. You start up just like that. Like I said, I also did a side of broccoli because the kids really, really like broccoli. What do you think? Good. Is it good? Yes. Yes? Yes, they're happy. Xander, did you eat all yours already? Do you want more? I have more pork for you if you want more. I technically made you a whole pork chop because I never know if you're gonna eat a whole one or a partial one. That dinner was so good. If you guys try it, definitely let me know what you think. I know I share recipes, sometimes not the best because I don't measure things, but so many of you have asked for recipes and stuff that I wanted to share more with you guys. Let me know if you guys enjoy the recipes um, or not. I 
I enjoy sharing the recipes. Actually, I made the most delicious dinner tonight that I almost filmed, um, but it started getting late and I just had to get it done quickly. I was out running errands and stuff and then got home and I'm like, oh, got to throw this together. But it turned out so good. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys enjoy these recipes and if you want me to share more often because I do really, really enjoy cooking. Don't get me wrong. There are nights I love my lazy girl dinners, but I do enjoy cooking a lot. And we do have one more recipe at the end of today's video, which I was so excited to try and share with you because I had never made it before. It was actually sent in by one of you guys for me to try. And like I said, it turned out absolutely amazing. Oh, so these lamps. So I got a bunch of recommendations of things to try to get the hair out of these lamps. Because I said in a previous video, I love these lamps, but inside is like impossible to clean. So the first thing someone said is use um, dryer sheets to clean your shades. That did work. Um, I don't know if it worked as well as just using my vacuum, but it did work. The other thing was using a hair dryer to blow it out. That did not work. Um, so we decided to take them outside and use the leaf blower. That actually worked. It got almost all of it out. There were a couple little like stragglers. And that's when I used one of my clean um, straw brushes and just went in and pulled the last little bit out. But super happy because these are like brand new again. It really wasn't that hard to do it. So thank you. I know a lot of people are saying air compressor, all sorts of different things. Um, and I didn't even think of. There's sometimes that like you would think it's like common sense, but sometimes you just don't think of it. And having you guys as like a backboard to get ideas off of is huge. I know often you guys are like, oh, you've been, you're so helpful to me and whatnot. But you guys are so helpful to me. Like there's so many times that I get recommendations from you guys, recipes from you guys, all sorts of stuff from you guys that has been hugely helpful. And often I end up sharing in my videos. That way we can pass on the knowledge. We're not gatekeeping here. Like let's support one another to be the best we can be. Um, and yeah, it's awesome awesome community to just bounce ideas off of each other and figure out what works So I actually used to have more on this end table, but this end table often becomes a drop zone. I like to put my shoes in here um, instead of having them throughout the house. My purse is often in here, um, all sorts of stuff on there. So I put less on there than I normally would. Let me know what you guys think. Does it look empty? Does it look spacious and good that way? I think it looks good but I also like get to a point where when there's so much clutter in the house meaning holiday decor that emptiness to me feels really really good um but yeah currently I still have it like you guys see it but now I am in the bathroom everything just needed a really good wipe down I did not decorate my bathroom for Christmas this year which actually felt really really nice it still had that like spa feeling without having everything so I didn't have to redecorate in here. It was really just doing the basic cleaning that I try to do on a regular basis. Make sure the counters are clean, the toilets clean. You guys know the basics. Like I don't like to let my toilets go for more than like a day. I'm not going to say I remember every single day to wipe them down because that would be a lie. And I am not a fibber, <laughs> but I can't let them go for more than like a day or two. Otherwise, they just get gross. They're toilets. They get gross easy. Moving slower I don't know what it is you do I've been looking at you all night Trying to figure you out I just want to make you smile Hold your hand in my hand Looking at the sunset Man, you're looking good tonight 
I just had, actually, I just responded to a comment about not seeing the dogs, the big dogs in videos recently. And it's funny because it was completely coincidence that they just haven't showed up much. They are both here, both alive and well and total troublemakers. Actually, Bailey and Minnie are constantly wrestling, well, wrestling as much as a three pound dog and 150 plus pound dog can wrestle. Um, but they are always, always around. This is the main room that they stay in. Um, not because they're forced to as much as they just enjoy it because this sofa they're allowed to be on. So I like to go in here regularly and de-shed this couch and get all the fur off of it. I mentioned though in Tuesday's video how I'm trying to cut back on decorative pillows and move more towards decorative pillow covers. They're so much easier to store. Um, and I'm not looking to like change out my pillows for regular decor on a regular basis. I mean more of when the holidays come, you have like a bunch of holiday pillows and seasonal pillows and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get down to where I'm using pillow covers more often. So the Christmas pillow covers were on these, but I ended up changing them out to this really pretty cream textured cover. And then this like sagey green that I felt matched this room beautifully. It breaks up the sofa. I definitely recommend if you have a large sectional because large sectional sectionals are super cozy, but I know a lot of people say they're like a style faux pas. Here's my recommendations for you. One, get pillows other than what come with that sectional because often it's pretty much the same pillow as what the fabric of the sofa is. So breaking it up with different pillows and throw blankets. It really does make a huge difference and breaks up the eye of just one big piece of furniture if you throw a throw on it and some different pillows on it, massive, massive difference. I am excited though, coming up soon, I am redoing this cabinet. It's taken me a while to decide. Um, and I did a couple of reaching out. I took a lot of your guys' opinions. So coming up soon, this cabinet right here is getting its own little glam up little change. I haven't touched it because I don't like to do something without really knowing I want to do it. Um, and it's just taken me a little while to figure it out. Also, yes, I got my mop socks on. People always wonder what these socks are. They're just little microfiber socks that uh, make it that your feet aren't getting wet when you're mopping the floors or getting little footprints on it. Plus, because they're microfiber, if you got a really tough spot on your floor, I can just use my toe and scrub it right, right up without having to get on my hands and knees and actually scrub the floor. I don't want to slow this down My heart is screaming out your name I'm wasted on you Here we are right underneath the stars So let's get a little reckless You make me breathless And I won't waste this And I promise that I Also, yes, it is always recommended to work top to bottom, but hey, real life, sometimes you forget some things, and I forgot to dust off this little electric fireplace, so I just came back around and quickly wiped it down, and then I put some essential oil oils in the diffuser. I have been really enjoying adding some lemon and eucalyptus and stuff into my diffusers. It's always just a really fresh and relaxing smell to me. So those are the ones I love to use. These are Young Living diffusers. However, I get oils from a bunch of different companies. Uh, really, whatever smells good, I will grab. I've also found really good diffusers on Amazon nowadays. I actually have to say I've not ordered from Young Liv Living other than their Thieves Cleaner in a long time. 
one, I have an abundance of oils. I don't need any. Um, and two, the type of diffusers, like I said, you can get online nowadays are so good. They have a lot of dupes for the Young Living ones. Um, and like the one in my bedroom that looks just like a little succulent plant, I think is the cutest thing in the world. All right, and now I need to do a quick tidy up in the kitchen. I need to make sure that the kitchen gets tidied before I ever start dinner for a new meal. Otherwise, it can be extremely overwhelming. You always also know me. I don't love cleaning my kitchen at night um, or cleaning my house at night in general. Normally, I just relax at night. So I will wake up in the morning. I'm always up before everyone because I take the boys to school. So they're at school. Bobby and Freya are normally still asleep. And that's when I get a lot of stuff done. Um, so that's why I don't do a lot of it at night. I am more of a morning person than a night person. So I would just rather do it in the morning. Um, now this may not seem like super morning time, <laughs> but it was still a little bit earlier. Bobby was up obviously because I cleaned the bedroom and that normally doesn't get done right right away in the morning but he was outside working on the Christmas decorations still outside he actually just got done today getting them all down it takes a couple weeks to get them all up but it also takes about a week or two to take them down so but he's got them all down I'm sure he feels really good to have all of that down so the house is back to normal on the inside the house is back to normal on the outside it's always really refreshing to be done with all that work Chasing payment on my own cause you're here to stay every night All right, so here's a question for you. If you cook with cast iron, I love cooking with cast iron. How do you wash your cast iron? So I try not to wash mine with like direct soap or anything. I usually try to wash it first or last so there's not a lot of soap. But I will say there has been times that if there's a little bit of soap on my sponge, it doesn't really bother me. But I'm curious how exactly you cook with cast iron. Um, I have a large cast iron pan, a small cast iron pan, and then like a cast iron griddle. And my mom always cooked with cast iron, so I really enjoy having the cast iron as well. There's just certain things like if I am making cornbread or um, any type of Oh, what is it called? Like a German pancake always turns out way better in cast iron. There's just certain things that just cook so much more even. A steak, steak is always better on cast iron, hands down. Um, but yeah, I'm curious if you cook with cast iron, like what is your routine for cleaning them? I know some people are like, eh, I just use soap, no big deal. And some people are like, if you even drop of soap on it, you've ruined your cast iron for life. And now just bringing out my Eureka wet dry vacuum. I've said it a million times and you are going to hear me say it a million times more because, hey, if you've been with my channel for a while, yes, you've heard it, but you 
may be new here and you've never heard me say it before, but wet dry vacuums are the best invention ever. I would even say above a robot vacuum if you have pets and kids because I cannot tell you how many times I have vacuumed and then gone to mop and there is still hair on the floor because my dog shook and there's hair everywhere. So being able to vacuum and mop all at the same time is the biggest game changer Ever, or when your kid drops the bowl of yogurt or the jar of spaghetti sauce, all real life things that have happened in my house. But one thing I will say is Every once in a while, you have to get in there and give it a thorough cleaning. I don't care what wet dry vacuum you have. I've had a handful of them. You have to do this. You don't have to do it every single time, but at least every couple of times, get in there, give it a really good rinse down, a really good wipe down, and then you don't need to worry about it smelling. I know people complain that they can get a stink to them, but as long as you take care of them and maintain them, they really, really won't. It's only if you just let that dirty water sit and marinate in there that, yes, it gets, it gets grody and stinky. So I have another recipe for you guys. Um, I'm quickly cleaning off some potatoes though because I'm gonna do some mashed potatoes with this recipe. So this one was actually sent to me by Robin. Uh, we were chit-chatting on Instagram the other day. She follows me here as well as on Instagram. So she sent me this recipe. Uh, she said her husband named it Pastor's Chicken because it's so good. Uh, you can serve it when the pastor comes over. And she was also telling me how she's considered making a YouTube channel, which I'm trying to convince you guys because I think it would be really good. And I'm always about supporting anyone that wants to start any type of social media. If it's YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, but she sent me this recipe. So I told her I would share it. I want to see how good it is. I haven't tried this yet. Uh, but it sounds delicious. Like everything in it, I feel like you can't go wrong. So we're gonna pick this up. And if you guys try it, I need you to help me to convince Robin to start a cooking channel because All right, so this recipe good. starts by marinating your chicken in some Italian seasoning. And she mentioned that the cheap stuff is best. Um, and she used chicken breast. So I'm using chicken breast, however, Normally, I prefer dark meat, um, but I wanted to go by the recipe first, and then maybe next time try it with chicken thighs because that is my preference. Um, but yeah, this chicken was put in the fridge in this marinade last night. So just heat up a pan and we're going to cook it. She says about 90% of the way through. I got a lot of chicken actually way more than I need for our family but I figured it sounds like it'll make good leftovers and I feel like chicken is one of those things that if I have leftovers and even my kids don't want to eat it I can always disguise it into a different type of meal in the future so I'm just going to sear all this up chicken breasts are actually really fat so you transfer it into a 9 by 13 um, for the other steps however I am not going to put it on oil I'm going to actually put it in the oven to cook because um, I don't think these are going to cook through well in this pan um, so it's going to finish baking in the oven for me all right so next step also I have to say I love the way she sends recipes because it's the same way I cook there's no measurements on this. So, figure it out for your family. <laughs> but in that pan, I'm going to add some butter. I'm doing half a stick. We also both agreed that butter is best. Like, just, just put some butter in it. It'll make all the difference in the world with your cooking. But I'm going to saute some mushrooms. She said freshly sliced, I'm too lazy for that. Yeah. 
I love mushrooms, so I'm doing two containers of mushrooms, plus these cooked down, kind of like asparagus. Um, not asparagus. We're doing asparagus with this also because I have leftover asparagus. Uh, but like spinach, it cooks way down. So it looks really full now, but I know once it starts cooking, it won't be as full. And then we're also going to add some garlic powder to the mushrooms, some pepper, This grater sometimes is amazing and sometimes like does not want to grate well. It's like the kernels get stuck. Some salt. And then she did not say minced garlic. She said garlic powder, but I love the flavor of minced garlic, so we're just gonna add a little more garlic. Nothing wrong with a little more garlic. And then some Italian seasoning, which is a fresh thing, so it's not open. Open it up. Yeah, that looks good. You season with your heart. So whatever you and your family like seasoning wise, do it. If you want less seasoning, do less seasoning. I like a lot of seasoning. Um, I did not put more seasoning on the chicken because her recipe didn't say, and it was marinating in that Italian dressing. So I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty flavorful without salt and peppering it and putting garlic on top. Plus this is another layered dish. We're gonna end up layering this in just a second once we saute these and get them all soft and delicious. My little sous chef here, she's eating some um, provolone and some, what is it called? Pastrami, I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. But we're now gonna layer it. We're gonna put the mushrooms on. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is that yummy for you? Mm -hmm. You like the pastrami? Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good? Mm -hmm. It's good too. All right, and then we are going to layer some pastrami on here. Trying to do a pastrami per chicken so that when you lift up a chicken breast, you get a little bit of everything on here. Do you want more? Mm-hmm. It's too good, man. It's too good. Mm -hmm. I like it, babe. Okay. Freya came in here because she said she wanted to talk to me. So, here we are. We're talking, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, and then I have some provolone cheese that we're going to put on here as well. I'm probably just gonna use all this cheese because I am from Wisconsin and you can't go wrong with cheese. Okay, probably not all of it, just a lot of it. <laughs> you want more cheese? Yes. Okay, I'll give you more cheese. Yeah, I have one. Okay, you want that? Yes, I have one. Okay. Too. So there it is, all layered. And now I'm gonna throw it in the oven till it is cooked through. Obviously it's gonna depend on the type of chicken. Like I said, these chicken breasts are thick. So they might take a little bit longer. All right, dinner tonight. Like I said, I had some leftover asparagus. We made mashed potatoes. And then the pastor's chicken recipe from Robin. So I definitely think because we like dark meat, chicken thighs would be really good. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of wish I would have cut the chicken breasts in half so they weren't so thick because then it would have been easier to get one bite of everything. Yeah. But I think it's so really good. if you like mushrooms, because this is a mushroom heavy dish, definitely a must try. It is so good. Everything goes together perfectly it is delicious so definitely try this if you like mushrooms i'm gonna put that out there because there's a lot of mushrooms in here um but i don't know i don't know if it would be the same with just the pastrami and provolone the mushrooms make a really really big difference so but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video if you did don't forget to like comment share this video uh subscribe all the things but i'll see you guys next time bye